Welcome. My name is Allison Secord, and I'm a Marketing Communications Specialist for Ecolab Pest Elimination. I will be kicking off today's presentation. We appreciate you taking the time to watch this webinar. We will be discussing and providing a clear understanding of the peanuts industry, the stored product paths that affect peanuts, and what your options are for solutions, including an IPM program, fumigation, and best practices. Now I will turn it over to our presenters to introduce themselves. Tammy? Thanks, Allison. I'm Tammy Sutherland. I'm a corporate account manager with Ecolab Pest Elimination, and I've worked in the pest industry for about 22 years, all with Ecolab. And my customers are food manufacturers just like you. I currently live in Arlington, Texas, and geographically cover customers whose base of operation is in the mid-south part of the country. I'll turn it over to Jack. Thank you, Tammy. I am Jack Jones. I'm a business development manager with Ecolab Specialty Pest Services. I started in food plant sanitation department, which included pest control and fumigations over 12 years ago. I crossed over into commercial fumigation with food protection services, which is now Ecolab. I manage a book of business that includes both commodity storage and food processing facilities in the South region. Tammy will now take you through the agenda. Thanks, Jack. So in this webinar, we're gonna be discussing a general overview of the peanut industry. What is IPM? And what kind of an important factor does that play in your program? We'll talk about what are stored product pests and the impact that they have on peanut harvests, the impact of pre and post harvest practices, as well as solutions to protect your investment. And finally, we'll discuss best practices and a quick summary. We hope you find that this webinar is interesting and helpful. Let me tell you about Ecolab Specialty Pest Services. Our services include fumigation, fogging, and bird exclusion. Specialty Pest Services has unrivaled reach across the food value chain. Fumigation plays a part in each of these spaces, from the commodity coming out of the field into the storage, then as it is processed, warehoused, and shipped to the end consumer, and sometimes through containers or ships going overseas. Today, we're gonna to focus on peanut storage in warehouses and bins. Now here's Tammy to give a quick overview of the peanut industry. Thanks, Jack. Now let's talk peanuts. The world peanut production totals about 45 million metric tons per year. And the US is the fourth largest producer after China, India, and Nigeria. Six states grow the majority of the US production with Georgia growing about 53% and Alabama, Florida, Texas, North and South Carolina rounding out the other heavy producers. The storage and shelling facilities are where we will focus our attention today and how your IPM programs will impact the quality and profitability of the harvests. The U.S. also exports about 670 metric tons, which is worth about $760 million annually. What is IPM and why is that important to you? The quality of peanuts is probably the number one reason why an IPM program is important. The Food Safety Modernization Act or FISMA, which we call it, um, was in the United States passed about 2013. FISMA has in increased oversight and accountability for all food producing facilities. And, this, and that includes your pest management systems. Protect your brand by making sure that your peanuts are considered of the very highest quality. Customer and worker protection is also important um, because we wanna make sure that they receive quality products and you have a safe place to work. Downtime has caused all kinds of different challenges and reducing your downtime due to pest activity increases your bottom line. You wanna make sure that you have a quality program that monitors, reduces, and eliminates pests will overall help you keep those costs down. This isn't a cheap program, but a program that provides you with the best results and prevents peanut loss or quality concerns. 
A quality program should give you good documentation on sanitation and structural concerns. Corrective actions on sanitation can provide you with good insights on your next steps to prevent additional loss and or quality concerns. Good documentation will also result in better audit scores. Jack, back to you. Thanks, Tammy. Although there are many pests and conditions that affect peanuts, today we're going to focus on the main store product pests that affect peanuts. Five of the most common are the Indian meal moth, the foreign grain beetle, the almond moth, the lesser grain borer, and the sawtooth grain beetle. Before we discuss in the detail a couple of these insects, I would like to emphasize that insect identification is the most important first step when insect activity is found. I like to take samples back to the office and use magnification to identify. By correctly identifying the insects, it helps to de determine your treatment options, it shows trends, positive insect identification is a must. These five insects all go through a complete metamorphosis stage, which includes egg, larvae, pupa, and adults. Of the five, we will go into further detail on the Indian meal moth and the foreign grain beetle. The Indian meal moth, also known as millers in the peanut industry, are three-eighths of an inch long with a wing spread of two-thirds of an inch. The head and thorax are reddish-brown with silver-gray rings of hair on the wingtips. They develop outside the food product, and the larvae feed on whole or processed food, usually the soft parts. The mature female can lay between 100 to 300 eggs at a time, and the larvae begin to hatch in 2 to 14 days. Mature larvae spin webs and leave silk threads on the commodity mass. The adults emerge from pupae in four to 10 days and their lives are short lived, about seven days, and only exist to mate and reproduce. Under perfect conditions, a life cycle can be as short as 28 days and they can have multiple generations per year. The adults do not affect the commodity and the larvae stage is the most damaging to peanuts causing worm cuts, and lowering their quality. This video shows how large an infestation can occur. The amount of dense webbing that can be produced by the larvae. In this instance, fumigation is needed, but with when we'll go into in a few slides. Actually, fumigation was probably needed several months earlier. You can see how dense this uh, this webbing is. That's uh, that's that's pretty bad. Now let's talk about the foreign grain beetle. It is rust red, one sixteenth of an inch, and it has a three segmented antennas. As the slide shows, it has a prominent eye and nose on the thorax. Sometimes it is mistaken for the red flower beetle. That's important because if it's a foreign grain beetle, that means that out of condition, wet, moldy peanuts or product is most likely somewhere in the warehouse. As stated earlier, positive insect identification is needed. The foreign grain beetle life cycle lasts two to four weeks, depending on the temperature and humidity. If the peanuts are out of condition, fumigant may not penetrate. Those wet, moldy peanuts would need to be removed. Pre and post harvest best practices. Protecting peanuts and storage can take place both pre and post harvest. Now we're going to discuss the pre harvest practices. Going into the season, let's set ourselves up to win the fight against pests. Sanitation is pest control, and a thorough cleaning is needed of the structure. Be sure to clean all the corners and the upper areas to remove any conditions that are attracted to pests. Follow this cleaning with an interior power spring with an insecticide with a residual and an insect growth regulator. Exterior of the, wet the warehouse is very important as well. Regular maintenance of the grounds, cut the lawns, kill the weeds, no open trash, no litter or food scraps around. After everything is cleaned up, I would, fall I would be sure to do an exterior power spraying with an insecticide with a residual and an insect growth regulator. Some additional measures to help prevent infestations are 
inspect your incoming shipments. Treat them if necessary, if they're found to be infested. Bait stations along the perimeter of the building about 50 feet apart. Bird remediation around the building and remove any nest. Warehouse doors should be sealed and in good repair. Now let's talk about post harvest practices. Well, I included this slide because it shows a couple of things. The first thing is sometimes you have to tarp the peanuts for an effective fumigation if you have a leaky structure. So in this instance, if you can see along the back wall there where all the light is, there were a lot of vents for good aeration and it was gonna, it was gonna be a, a real task to get all those sealed. So in this instance, we decided it was better to go ahead and tarp, tarp the, the commodity mass. So in this instance, we shot gas underneath the tarp and then we fogged above the tarp to get any insects that may be flying around. The second thing I'd like to show you is that notice how rounded off and smooth the pile of peanuts are. Airflow is important. The piles have a nice smooth uniform pile with no peaks or valleys that creates better airflow. I've noticed while walking peanuts that when peaks and valleys are present you have reduced airflow. A lot of insect acti activity will start in those valleys where the airflow has been reduced. You'll start to see webbing and some millers flying around. Walking the peanuts is one way of monitoring for pests and we do a lot of training on site with what to look for. And during the warmer months, this takes place more often. Visual inspections are important. You're looking for insect larvae on the walls, uh, webbing, trying to see how many is flying around. So visual ins inspection is important, but there are also other monitoring devices to, to find trends. Two ways to monitor insect activity in peanut warehouses are the first, as I stated, walk the peanuts, do a visual inspection of the pile on the walls, looking for webbing larvae on the commodity mass and walls. The second is with monitoring devices as shown in this slide. First is the probe trap, which is pictured above. The pheromone is inserted into the probe and sticks into the peanut pile. These monitor beetles and other insects that are in the pile. The second is the wing trap in the top right of the slide. It hangs in the warehouse and will monitor for flying insects such as the Indian mill moth. Lastly, we have the dome trap pictured at the bottom of the slide. It's mainly used in shelter plants to monitor for beetles. Remember, Insect identification is a must. Thresholds are set for each location and will vary. As you're monitoring each of these traps, you're counting the number of insects each week and you record your findings. When we meet those thresholds for that location, we take action. Most of the time, it is to fumigate. Solutions. So we've reached the action thresholds through monitoring and visual inspections. Now let's talk about the solutions. Let's talk about fogging. Fogging is an option many places choose, but it's not a total elimination of all life stages of the pest. We consider it suppression, not elimination, because only the adults and the larvae on top of the webbing or the mass will be eliminated. Here's why. A fogging agent or a chemical is suspended into the air by mechanical means or cylinderized but cannot penetrate all areas of the structure and the product like a gas fumigant. The smaller the molecule, the better the coverage. There are several fogging agents that are on the market, but two of the most popular are pyrethrins and dichlorobus, and both can leave a residual on the product. That creates a risk of contamination. With fogging, as with all chemical applications, the label is the law. And with fogging, even when following the label, you won't know if there's any residual chemical on the peanuts that you're adding to. The label states that the tolerance or amount of chemical a commodity can have on it. With fogging, the residual is cumulative. And when the product is tested before usage or sale, if the residual exceeds the tolerance limits, the product is deemed unusable and needs to be discarded. Now we're going to talk about the other option. Fumigation. Fumigation is when a gas is introduced into a bin, structure, or a container at a concentration that is lethal to the targeted insect. 
Only fumigation will kill all life stages, egg, larvae, pupa, and adult. Fumigants will penetrate and kill insects both in and on the commodity. When fumigation is needed, be sure to evaluate the structure. How well will it hold? Maybe it needs to be tarp to, be, to fume the peanuts and far, fog above the tarp to kill the insects, as we had shown earlier. Repeated fumigation with a leaky structure where proper concentration to kill all life stages is not achieved, that can aid in phosphine resistance, studies have shown. Let's talk about the chemicals that are on the market. The first is solid phosphides. They come in both magnesium and aluminum. Solid phosphides are in the form of tablets, pellets, and prepacks. They break down with moisture in the air to produce a pure phosphine gas. Phosphine gas kills all life stages of the insect. They are the cheapest form of fumigation. However, they also have the most risk. They react with the water and can cause a fire. So be sure and think about your structure. Do you have a, a leaky roof or even on the walls? If water is entering that structure, there is a great risk that you could have a fire with putting pellets out. The second is workers must enter the structure to distribute the tablets and the pellets throughout. If they don't properly distribute those tablets or pellets and they pile up, they can heat up and cause a fire as well. And lastly, phosphine gas is corrosive to copper, wire, and other soft metals. Now let's talk about our second option, cylinderized phosphine, much safer. It is a phosphine gas that is introduced through a machine into the structure from the exterior of the structure. So you have no worker exposure, it's non-flammable, and it's effective on all life stages of insects. It is much safer than pellets, but still it is corrosive to copper wire and other soft metals. The last one I'd like to talk about is sulfuryl fluoride. It kills all life stages of insects. It has rapid penetration and aeration. It rapidly distributes into the pest harborages. You don't have any worker exposure, because it is cylinderized and is pumped in from the exterior of the building. It is an odorless, colorless gas. It's non-corrosive, no risk of damage to the equipment or the electronics or the structure. It does not affect the commodity flavor, the quality, the color, or any of the processing characteristics. Fumigation is the most effective form because it kills all life stages of insects Why fumigate? Proven results. We have real-time monitoring with the fumigation process that we have. We're able to tell what the gas levels are in that structure at any time. So if we need to add gas, we would know that. Okay, so we have the ability to adjust at the moment's notice. The fumigation will reach all the hard, clean insect coverage areas with ease. It kills all life stages of insects and rodents and we can also deliver a detailed post fumigation report. Also, reduce risk. Minimum calculated dosages, the cylinderized phosphine helps reduce the risk of fire because it's non flammable. Sulfuryl fluoride has no effects on the equipment or digital components, and then all these treatments leave no residues. Lastly, we have provides real value. Fumigation allows zero pest reset. FISMA, audit compliance, flexible schedules, and limited downtime. Now let's turn it over to Tammy to sum this all up. Tammy? Wow, thanks Jack for the great overview about fumigation. So what are some of the important factors to even consider when choosing a fumigation partner? Well, you need to consider one that offers a total IPM program using GMPs that are established by the FDA and the American Peanut Council. Also, someone who can perform safe, responsible, and ethical fumigations as part of your IPM program. And someone who also has the capability to have a large fumigation footprint across the U.S. for nationwide coverage and consistency. You need someone who offers solutions using a variety of treatment methods to meet the need and can provide you with detailed documentation, assist you with audits, and offers additional educational materials and training for your employees, similar to this video or in-person training. In summary, let's take a few takeaways from this review. 
IPM is an important part of your strategy to make the most out of your hard work. Having a provider that can offer fumigation if needed is a great way of protecting your investment as well as protecting the safety of your employees. Being able to identify pests and understanding their biology is critical in making decisions for pest prevention and next steps. Following good pre and post harvest practices will make the biggest impact on the quality of your peanuts as well as your IPM program. If you have a couple of options, should you fumigations be necessary with sulfuryl fluoride and phosphine, and we talked about the pros and cons of both of those. Fumigation is a great option with proven results, and FISMA changed the way that we do business. Good documentation and corrective actions provide your team with actionable insights for pest prevention. The bonus, you have everything that you need for an audit compliance. Thank you, Tammy and Jack, for today's presentation. I'd like to thank you for your time today. We greatly appreciate you watching our Peanuts webinar. This webinar is available on ecolab.com on our fumigation page. The address is located on this slide on your screen. We hope you found this information presented today valuable, and we look forward to seeing you attend future Ecolab webinars.